Hey guys, it's me, Crazy on a Chris, your sales consultant here at Randy Kill Honda in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And here behind me, I have a brand new 2024 Honda Civic hatchback. This is the Sport Touring trim, so let's get going. All right, so here we are right outside the Sport Touring. Now, I'm excited because it's been a while since I've seen one of these and I actually have the opportunity to make a video now, okay? So with that being said, you guys are welcome to pause the video right about here if you want to explore on your own. Now let's explore it together. You can see it's a 2024 Honda Civic Hatchback Sport Touring Trim. We have the fuel economy over here on the top right hand side. It's 30 for the city, 37 for the highway with a combined up 33. Down on the right hand corner talks about your safety ratings. Who doesn't love that? Almost 5 out of 5. Right over here is where the vehicle is made at. It is a US made product. The price point and then the list of the standard features and functions which we're going to try to cover today. Now you guys will see this is in the Boost Blue Pearl. So the Boost Blue Pearl is only available in the Sport and the Sport Touring hatchbacks from there. And it comes with a black interior, okay? I will also throw some additional color options up there for the Sport Touring. Then also there's going to be a plus charge for that color so you guys are fully aware of it before visiting your local Honda dealership, okay? Now we're going to walk here towards the front of the vehicle. It comes in with two key fobs and remote start comes standard. You simply just hit lock, hold this button down here for a few seconds. Watch the lights flash, it starts up, the lights will flash again to let you know it received it, runs in 10 minute intervals, and the doors will remain locked for you, okay? So let's say 10 minutes have passed, boom, it shuts off automatically. Eight minutes have passed, I'll repeat that process again. It runs for the grand total of 18 minutes. You can't do it a third time, so no, no, no. Only twice, then you actually have to get in and turn on the vehicle, okay? Now, let's see if I change my mind. I can click and hold this button down here for a few seconds. It turns it off for you. Now we're going to step down here. We're going to be talking about the engine. You have a 1.5 turbo with a CVT. I'm going to throw a horsepower and torque up there so you guys know what you're playing around with. Now Honda Sensing comes standard with this. You got your lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, forward collision, road departure, traffic jam assist. You got your blind spot information system. You got your cross traffic. I mean, there's a lot of goodies in here that we're going to unravel as time goes on throughout this video, okay? So boom, safety is pretty much his middle name and you guys are set up there for safety, all right? Now you have your LED lights all the way around. That means your fog lights down below. You're going to have headlights, daytime running lights, and then tail lights, all LED. We're also going to have some more safety stuff like the parking sensors, okay? So you're going to have parking sensors right over here, as you can see. So you have front and rear parking sensors. Your wiper is going to be underneath the hood line from there. Just kind of cleans up that look. That boost blue looks pretty nice when you're sitting in the driver's seat looking out right now this morning. It looks like you're looking out on the ocean almost. I love it. Now we're going to step here off to the side. I got these exclusive alloy rims here for the Sport Touring trim. Looking pretty sharp. Then we're going to take a step back here on the side profile of the vehicle. I'm going to throw some exterior measurements up there so you guys know how it compares to you guys' current vehicle than other ones out there in the market. Now you'll see it comes with body color handles. You got a little bit of chrome action up there on the top around the windows. It's a black finish right down below the windows there. And then you have a body color side mirror with turning indicators integrated into that. So here's your turning indicators right here. So if I hit the lock button, you can see that. Now these mirrors are right down on the door instead of the A pillar. So that's kind of nice when you're in looking out, opens up your visibility so much more. Kind of helps with that blind spot. Now these mirrors are going to be a breakaway mirror, so if you need to fold them in, it's super easy. If you accidentally bump something, that's not a problem. Super easy to pop it right back in place. Now I shared the blind spot information right here for you guys. If you haven't seen that in action, I have the video out there. I was going to show you that in action, but let's just kind of give you a nice little summary. So the blind spot information system, if you're driving down the road, here I am, a car in your blind spot, that light's going to light up. Now when you have your turning indicator on while someone's in your blind spot, then it will flash and beep at you from there. So alert you, hey, don't turn yet, okay? So the great thing about Honda, it allows you to customize all of your safety features. If you want all the beeps, none of the beeps, the sensitivity of that stuff, I will have a video out there, show you guys how to customize your vehicle settings so you know how to do that. Now we're also gonna have smart entry system. So let's see if I get the key fob here in my pocket. I put my hand in the handle and it unlocks it for you. I can keep the key fob in my pocket once again, and then put my thumb down on these ridges it locks it all up for me, okay, so I can walk away with confidence. Or I can simply have the walk away auto lock feature enabled. So simply I just have the key fob with me, I shut the car, I shut the door, get 10 feet away, boom, it locks all the doors so I don't have to second guess that I locked the doors, did I not? I just know they're locked. Now if I left the key in the car, 
it won't lock the doors, all right? So you cannot accidentally lock the key in the car. So for example, here's another way. Let's have a habit with my older Accord, all right? I get out of my car, accidentally let the key in there, I hit the lock button, I shut the door, the car registers the order I've done these steps, and it's like, hey, you accidentally are locking your keys in the car, okay? So I have a video out that's gonna show you guys how to lock your key in the car, the fob itself, when you take the key out, if you only have one key. Now, if you are out there, or there's a couple, like my wife leaves her purse in the car, she has a key fob in the purse, I take my second key out, and I have to hit the lock button that registers on purpose locking a key in the car, okay? Whew, there's a lot of good information right there. All right, so we'll come right over here to the capitalist gas tank. When the car's unlocked, this pops right open, okay? No longer cheap cap to worry about fixing or replacing down the road. It's a simple slide and go. Now, when I shut this and I hit the lock button, this is all locked up too. Now, I'm gonna step here towards the back for you guys. Here we are, once again, we have LED brake lights, just, you know, as you plan until the brakes for safety, of course. You got some chrome-tipped exhaust down below. Here's those parking sensors here for you guys. You got one right there. And then we got one over here, and then there, and right over there. So you're gonna have four of these bad boys, okay? Now, they're also gonna be acting like your low-speed braking control. So as you're in the parking lot, you're slowly backing up to an object. Of course, you know, your parking sensors go up, beep, 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 the closer you get. Then if you're about to hit an object, you don't stop soon enough for any particular reason, it stops the car for you. So it's gonna help you out there in the parking lot. So it's pretty cool, extra set of eyes. Who doesn't love an extra set of eyes for safety? Now, we got badge of honor right here. People know you're rolling around with the big dog, the Sportorium from there. I love how the lights kind of wrap from right in there all the way over. Now let's talk about the hatch here quick. Now on your key fob, you're gonna notice you're gonna have a hatch button here. So let's say everything's locked up. This is not a power lift gate hatch. This simply just unlocks your hatch. So if I tap that button, it unlocks it while keeping the rest of these doors remaining locked, okay? So that's the whole point of that there. Now as we kind of check this out, you're gonna notice you get your privacy blinds right here from the get-go. People can mind their own P's and Q's. That comes right back in there, ravels from there. Then we also have the second half of this. This can come out if you want it to. Carpet mats come standard. Let's check out what's down below. Spare tire, those additional tools you may need for those unforeseen events. You're set for success. That comes right back down. Now, if you got some cargo in there, you don't want to be jumping around. You have some cursy tie downs to tie those bad boys down. So you don't worry about it jumping around, tearing up anything back here, or damaging anything from that, or breaking itself. We have a light back, and then let's see how these lights, oh, I'm sorry, let's see how these seats fold down. And there we go. Let's back up, take a quick little look. And there we are, plenty of space. Life happens, you know you got the cargo space now. You can say with a smile, challenge accepted. You know what, let's take a moment. Let's bring these seats right back up. There we go, we got those seats right back up. Now, we're gonna come over back to the hatch here quick. You'll see we have a couple handles. So, you guys are set either way. They're pretty nice, easy to grab. You have your multi-angle or camera. Then, of course, you got your hatch release button right there. Then you got this button, okay? So, this button's gonna be a lifesaver depending on how you have your guys' vehicle settings set up. So, what I mean by that, let's say the car is all unlocked right now. My son got out. The other kids get out. Who knows what's going on? Who's tag along with me? They shut the door. I grabbed my supplies. I'm the last one done with the car, and I don't have the walk auto lock feature enabled, but I want to lock all the doors. I don't want to take my key fob out of my pocket. All I have to do is shut this. I hit this button, and it locks all the doors for you. All right, okay? So I don't have to dig in my pocket with my hands full and then psh, psh, hit the buttons, all right? So I'm gonna come over here to the back seats. I'm gonna open this up. Before we dive in, I'm gonna throw some interior measurements up there so you guys know how much room's back here for your friend, your pets, your cargo, whoever's brave enough to tag along with you guys. You guys are set, okay? Now as we come right over here, we have a leather armrest. You guys know about power windows. Then you got a little texture here within this armrest. Once again, you have a nice black finish. Then we'll come down here to some additional cubby space. Now as we come right over here, you'll see that leather interior once again. Let's get in a little more. Now we're gonna have some airbags. And we got those curtain airbags too. I mean, this thing is loaded with airbags for you. Now down below over here, we're gonna have a couple USBs. We have a courtesy pocket over there on the front passenger seat. 
carpet mat come standard, not the all seasons, but we have them in here. So you can see how the laser cut tight fit these are with nice high walls. I love these. I have these in both of my Hondas. So I'll definitely encourage you guys to get some all season mats, regardless of the brand. It's nice here in Iowa. So seat belts, boom, boom, pop those bad boys out. Armrest, cup holders. And then there we go. We already talked about how it's a 60 40 split seat. Um, and then you're going to have anchors here for your car seats. You can see where those are going to be at as you dig down from there, okay? Now let's back out. That's pretty much going to be the back seat. Now, before we dive in front here, I'm going to take off my jacket because I'm sweating to death. I thought it was going to be cool this morning, but apparently I'm warming up. So we'll be back in one second. And we're back. All right, so we're going to open up the driver's side door here quick. Before we dive in here, we're going to take a look at the door controls, okay? So you have a nice leather armrest. You got a nice little gloss black finish going right up here. Then we get to all the goodies, like the buttons. So you guys know about power windows, power locks, your mirror selector, then the D-pad to adjust. Then you got this nice button here, just in case you can have young whippersnappers in the back or misbehaved husband like myself playing with the windows, you can lock them out. Down below, you got some additional cubby space. They'll come right over here to the driver's seat so of course it's gonna be a nice leather interior you're gonna have a powered seat over here so it goes forward it goes back the little front half tilt up and down then you get your raise and lower from here as you tip this up and down then you get your recline from there okay so that's gonna be your seat controls here for the driver's seat then you got little chrome out here pedals to get it a to b then your hood release is gonna be right here so we're gonna pop this bad boy we're gonna show you guys some of those little common courtesy stuff that you may do on your own so let's get going here we are, right underneath the hood. You guys already know it's a 1.5 turbo with a CVT transmission. We even talked about that stuff. But the little things that you may do, once again, it could be right over here. For example, the washer fluid's a nice blue cap, easy to find. What else is easy to find? The dipstick is a bright orange. You can find that between day and night. You got your oil cap right up here. You got your coolant cap. They'll come right up here. The battery's easily exposed. If you ever need to do anything with that and the feature jump, replace, or anything like that, you're good to go. Brake fluid is right here. And then you got your fuse box in there, okay? But any more of those advanced questions, contact your local Honda service center. You have all the information you need. I'm a buttons guy, not a technician, so they have all the answers for you guys. But you know what? For those who have more capabilities than myself, let's do one more look over here just for you guys. And there it is. Now let's get right up front. All right, so here we are right inside the Civic. Now, simply have the key fob with you. It could be in your pocket, your purse, your jacket, just somewhere in the vehicle. The next step you want to do is simply put your foot and press down on the brake pedal. You see the light will come on on the button. You push that right in and then watch the vehicle turn on from there. Now, as everything started up, we're going to come over here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel controls. We're going to talk about these buttons here. So the top one right up there is going to be your parking sensors. They're off and then they're back on. You can tell because of the green light right there. And then right here is going to be a vehicle stability assist or your traction control. It's not a little tapper. It's a click and hold that bad boy down. Then you can see when it's off because of that little light down below. So if I hold that again, holding it, there we go. Now your traction control is back on. This button down here is going to be for some of your safety features. So as you select this button right there, this will pop up on the right hand side. So that's going to be kind of corresponding with a quick visual of this icon right there. So if I turn off some of these items, you'll see that color will change a little bit as you go. But I'm going to enable everything. So if everything's on, it's fully green. If everything is disabled, it will be grayed out, okay? So first option right here that you can turn off on the fly if you want to is your road departure, your blind spot information system, your low speed braking control, and then your forward collision. So we're gonna keep everything on here, okay? For the next person to test drive the vehicle. Then right over here, you're gonna see the little wheel action. As you scroll up and down, all right? And that will adjust the brightness of your driver's interface screen. So we're gonna keep everything maxed out so it's easy for everyone you can see. So that's, now, that's gonna be all of your controls over here. Now your steering wheel is gonna be a telescopic. There's a release, pull that down. It goes in, out up and down so as you guys see fit then simply just lock that right back in place so super nice and easy all right now what we're going to do here quick we're going to play around with the steering wheel controls before we do that we're going to honk the horn i got the windows down so you guys can hear it here we go in three two one that's the horn super nice and good from there okay 
Now, let's talk about the controls. Your safety controls are gonna be over here on the right-hand side for your safety features. So the first one's gonna be your cruise control. It's gonna be this little icon. So as I hit this icon, you get a matching icon up there, up top for you. So you can see it's available. So if I hit the button again, it's no longer available. You can't use it. So this is your adaptive cruise control. I can tell because it has a picture of a car from the speedometer with an arrow that's gonna lock it in place. Now your standard cruise control is gonna look like this. It does not have a car in front of it. It has a little speedometer meter with that arrow that locks right in place. Now to switch between the two, all you have to do is select this button and hold, all right? And then there we go. There it is, switched it, and then switched it back. Now your standard cruise is just obviously you hit it, it holds you know your speed in place, your adaptive cruise control will actually keep you in sync with the car in front of you. So let's say for example we got our cruise control set to 45, the car in front of you is going, I don't know, 43. We set our distance. This is the button right here. You don't click and hold, you tap this bad boy, little taparoos. You'll see these right up there changing. Those lines up there, okay? So less lines means closer, more lines means further away from the car in front of you. So now we selected our distance. Once it finds a car in range, it will beep. When a car gets in and out of range, then it slows you down to maintain that distance, okay? So you just slow down, maintaining, they get out of the way, then you resume back to your cruise control speed. So it keeps you at sync, okay? So there we go. Now this button over here is gonna be for your lane keep assist and traffic jam assist, okay? So those are two systems that have the same concept. So your lane keep assist is for your highway driving. You go between 45 to 90 miles an hour, while your traffic jam goes from 25 to 45 miles an hour. Whole point of this stuff, when you select that button right there, you have a match icon, it's on, it's available. Once you're driving, you'll find the lines on the road and you'll display it right up there to let you know when it's actually working. So when you go out of your lane, beep 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 you turn that on or off but it also brings you back and keeps you in the center of your lane all right so you should not be playing ping pong back and forth giving you guys motion sickness like some other brands may okay so take it out there play around a little bit with that so you guys get some hands-on experience now obviously how to set your cruise control is probably very important to know so you got a little toggle switch here toggle down that sets it you can adjust the speeds and then you can cancel from there so that's all of your safety features over here on the right hand side now one thing i've got to mention here quick is that you just have a leather wrapped steering wheel obviously you guys see that but i'm going to point out the obvious okay so now over here we got paddle shifters over here we got your wipers so they're going to be adjustable and mitten wipers and it's going to be auto wipers as well so right now they're off because i pop it up if i put it down one boop now it's gonna be auto sensing wipers so if it rains uh, they automatically come on accordingly okay but i'm gonna turn the auto sensing off now you're gonna have your rear wipers right over here it's as simple as a twist from that point all right so that's gonna be a wiper stick over here is gonna be for your headlights you can turn those bad off bad boys off you got your fog lights right here you got your turning indicators things like that and so there we go now we'll come right over here. You got a little media controls. You got your volume. You skip between your radio stations and you got your voice commands. So if I got my phone paired up, I'm like, hey, call Crazy Honda Chris on mobile phone because I got a question or whatever the case is going on. You can use that. You guys are pretty familiar with that stuff by now. If not, let's do a little practice, okay? Now, that's going to be pretty much your steering wheel controls. A couple of things I haven't mentioned yet because we're going to talk about it now is these little wheel actions. Okay, so you got little wheels scrolling up and down. These are actually count as buttons too, so you push in to select items. So let's start over here on the left-hand side. Up here on the driver's interface, I'm scrolling up and down on this wheel, okay? So you can see some options. This could be more of your media controls right here. So if I hit the back button, you can access your phone. You got your radio. Music option, cell eight, radio, USB, stuff like that. Then your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it's wireless. Then you can customize what you want to show on your display. So if I got too much clutter here and if I don't use my Bluetooth or whatever, X, Y, and Z, I can take those items off if I want to. Got your clock action down here. Simply have it on or off. We're gonna keep that bad boy on. I like to have a reminder if I'm running late or not. So right now you can see it's 11.15. Then there we go, that's pretty much it. That's gonna be all of your controls over here. Now, the great thing about this stuff, as you see, you have a little scroll bar right over here. As you go down, you can see where you're at. So we're kind of in the middle. This is the bottom. This is the top. I'm assuming you guys see that right now. 
And there we go. So we're gonna back up here quick. We're gonna come over to this action too as well. And we're gonna scroll through these items. So, first thing we're gonna start right here is going to be your fuel and range, okay? First option comes right up, is that the top? Yep, so it's the top, because we've got that little scroll bar, it doesn't last that long. So fuel and range right now with a full tank of gas, we can go 403 miles before we go on empty. Now, I know a common question a lot of people ask, Chris, why is yours different than mine? Well guys, this is learning, this is learned from the past four miles on the driving habits on a full tank of gas, you can go X amount far, okay? So let's say if I put like 5,000 miles on this car, it's gonna be totally different because I learned from my driving habits, how I drive, maybe I'm more of aggressive, or maybe more conserved with my driving than you guys are, or maybe I do a lot more city or highway stuff like that, okay? So is computer generated learning from your guys' driving habits and conditions. Now you can see the average fuel economy that we're getting right now in the past four miles. The car says pretty much for the past four miles it's it. Then you have a graph down below from zero to 90. That's gonna show you guys your lifetime fuel economy you're getting at that moment. You'll see that bar fluctuate as you go from A to B, okay? Now, as I tap the little wheel action right down here, I tap this bad boy, you can see your trip A and trip B is gonna switch between the two. If I get to B and I click and hold that wheel in, I can reset it. So that's how you reset your trip A and B from that point. Now as we're gonna scroll down, you got your speed and time. So if you wanna kinda of get things going from that point, you can you know, get out there on the track where you're gonna be using that for. Now as we scroll down again, you're gonna have your navigation. You got a couple options, save places, recent, stuff like that, click go home. If you had it saved, and then you have your compass up there. Now you got your driver's attention monitoring system, okay? So as you're driving down the road, the car knows the difference between the wind blowing you around or you doing a real bad job at driving like this, okay? So as you're doing a bad job at driving, you probably want the car to do everything in its power to alert you for your safety that you need to pull over and take a break. So it has a little bar here, the car's gonna try to get your attention and encourage you to pull over. Then I'll scroll down here. Next one's gonna see where the seat belts are, who's sitting where. Here we are in the driver's seat without a seat belt. If I grab the front passenger seat, I'm gonna buckle in three, two, one, boop. You'll see it right there, it's already plugged in. And then if I unplugged it, you can see how fast and responsive that's going to be. There's your oil, maintenance stuff. So we already talked about a couple of these options here. This could be a system safety support, same concept as we talked about, just another way to get to it. So we're gonna back out, scroll down again. You can customize your display. You can choose what you want to show on here. So if you have too much clutter, if you don't use anything, you may remove a couple items. Oh yeah, here we go, gauge display. So some people love the round look here. If you go to the bar look too as well, some people like that. So you guys can kind of change things a little bit, kind of personalize the vehicle a little more. So now you can see your speed over there, you take on more over there versus over here. As we do it round, it's a little more traditional as people have seen in the past. If I hit the back button, back button, and there we go. So now you see it. And then we got no content here. So if you need to change from the miles per hour to you know kilometers, you can see from here, you just simply hold in that little uh, wheel action and it will change it for you guys. Now, before we dive on to the next thing, I'll actually just want to talk a little bit about the layout here quick. All right, so your gas tank's gonna be over here. You're looking at the bars. So you can see, it's not this little red light. That's the bars. So it's a full tank of gas. If it's a half tank of gas, half of the bars would be gone. Now, you see about four miles right here, where a normal drive, we're gonna talk about that in a second. You got your speeder meter, then a digital speeder meter right up here, and then you're gonna have your outside temperature down over there, and then we are, can see that we're in park. Now, your temperature gauge is gonna be over here for your engine temp, and there we are. Now, you're also gonna have this little car emblem down here, so if I put the vehicle into drive, you'll see we're down, it's up, I'm applying onto the brakes, I got the electrical parking brake on so I can really let go. If I have my turning indicator, whoop, what one's doing what? My lights, let's turn these on. Brakes. And there we go. So at least you guys can see a little cool stuff going on up there, okay? So we're gonna put it back in part, turn off the electrical brake, and we are safe. Now from here, we're gonna back out and come over here to the nice nine inch touch screen, okay? Now, the nine inch touch screen for the hatchback is only available on this trim, the sport 
Touring trim. Now this is also going to be available on the sedan version for the Touring sedan. The lower trim level is going to have that 7 inch. So this one's going to be a nice colorized, you know, a lot more business going on here. So it's a little more busy. So let's talk about the busy stuff now. So you have your apps right there. If you want to select that, you can choose what apps you want to take off. It's showing from the home screen. But we're going to keep everything enabled for you, okay? Now over here, you're going to have your navigation. It's going to be a Garmin navigation, built-in satellite navigation. We're going to back up from there. You can pair up multiple phones. You can set yours as a priority if you have multiple there. So if you get incoming calls, yes, I'll answer. No, I won't. Hang up. Stuff like that. Place through the vehicle for you. Music options. So you got quite a bit of music options. Hit source right up there. You can see you have FM, AM, Sirius, XM. You get three months of satellite radio for free. After that, you have to contact them to continue that paid subscription. From there, you have a USB plug-in. So if you have like any kind of music onto a flash drive and things like that. So if you want to buy a portable USB plug-in CD player that you can find online, you can get that bad boy and take your CDs and you know play from that point. Um, you have your Bluetooth capabilities in your smartphone connection your wireless apple CarPlay and wireless android auto all right so you, it's going to be as simple as uh, connect if you have an android phone like myself you would have to allow the permissions for your android um auto and then it's simple to pair up from there okay now we're going to back up since we talked a little bit about radios some options you hit tune so you can find a radio station you guys may like you just type in some random numbers and then find it to save it all you have to do is click and hold then it saves that bad boy as you guys can see from there and then that's how you're going to find your radio stations same thing is going to work for fm radio now we're going to have your smartphone connection so if it's already paired i just can hit the button it takes me right to my apple carplay or android auto but i don't have anything connected yet you got your trip so you can see right now trip A's and trip B's, stuff like that, my current drive. So a lot of good information there at your fingertips. We got general settings. You got some stuff going in here. I'll let you guys explore that on your own. We're gonna come up here to vehicle settings. This is where you guys can customize all of your vehicle settings, you know, like the safety features. You want all the beeps, none of the beeps, uh, when you want your doors to unlock, when you want your doors to lock, those kind of stuff. I'll have a video later on. It's my goal to show you guys this stuff. It's for when you buy this car, drive off the lot, you're set for success before you actually drive off the lot. So we talked about USB and AM radio, get your software updates, Honda Link. Check out hondalink.com. It will show you guys what this vehicle is compatible with for certain complimentary stuff on that app so definitely check out hondalink.com put in the year against a certain vehicle and you see all the goodies now you can have a smart shortcuts the car is going to learn a little bit about the app certain stuff and it's going to make some recommendations up there for you okay so that's going to be pretty much almost everything right there on the touch screen you can adjust the brightness of your touch screen here too as well you can turn it off the brightness Let's make that bad boy. Darn plastic film. All right, so there we go. I think I kind of flattened that a little bit, the plastic we have on it. So there we go. So now we can turn that on or off. As you guys can see, I just hit the home button, and then we're good to go. Okay? Now, down here, you got nice little quick saves if you want to. So let's see if I don't have anything there. Let's grab this. You can reorganize what's on your touch screen. So if I don't use anything... That much I can take it off to the second page just like you can do on a tablet and then down below if I wanted to have it as quick save and then there we go you can save it from that point so pretty nice now we're gonna back up here quick when I take a look at the dashboard where all the adjustable events are gonna be at so this one is obviously gonna be yours okay you can it's open now it's closed these ones right here we're gonna argue about these who's gonna have control of these and then over here is gonna be mine because you guys can't reach this so yep keep that bad boy open it's closed nice soft and there we go now one quick thing I forgot to mention is gonna be is gonna have a Bose sound system here for the radio guys you have Bose speakers right up in here so that's kind of a big deal for those that love listening to music know the difference can hear the difference within your speakers now we're gonna have a hazard light right over here. As you smack that button, you get your hazard lights. If you ever need these, you know where they're at. And then we're gonna come down to the center console controls, your climate controls, stuff like that, your heated seats. So as you select your heated seats, you got your front heated, you got high, medium, low, and off. 
Now, as you're playing around with these buttons, you'll see it right up here on the touch screen. So as I'm driving down the road, I'm gonna need to whoop, I can whoop, there we go, okay? And it's gonna be the same for your temperature, your fan speed, your different modes. As I'm selecting that, you'll see all that up there. So let's come back down here so you can see all the stuff that I'm hitting. All right, so this is gonna be your dual climate control. So I got, cause this is the big argument in my marriage. I love having things cold. You guys probably seen my multiple of my videos. My wife hates it. She's like, Chris, why Why am I always cold? You're always playing around. She's more around the 70s type, you know, weather. So there we go. She's happy, I'm happy, I'm not in trouble. Everyone's doing great. So dual climate. Or if I'm here alone, I can hit the sync button and I have the power of everything. You got your fan speed. You can see what's at, it's max. It's low, it's off, now it's back on. You got your air circulation, different modes. Front defroster, rear defroster with heated side mirrors, and AC on and off. Now we're gonna come down here. We have a couple USBs, you have a 12 volt plug-in, we have a wireless phone charger, it's on. You got this little button here to turn it off if you want to, if you wanna use it as a tray and stuff like that. And then we'll turn it back on. Nice texture going on here, cup holders, gearbox right here. We have park, reverse, neutral, and drive. As we put this into reverse, guess what pops up? If you guys guessed the backup camera, you guys are good. So here we are. We're gonna have a nice big backup camera. So the first button right here, this is all touchscreen by the way. These little buttons are gonna show you how the camera's gonna act. So this is a nice 180 view. This is great when you pull it out of the parking lot, right? And you can catch a little more of your blind spot who's coming from the side. This is more of a directly right behind you view than a straight down shot from your rear bumper. So as you're doing any parallel parking, backing up, you can see how close you're getting to that item. Now this is gonna be on and off. Now it's off, now it's on for your cross traffic mounting system. So when you get the vehicle into reverse and while it's on, whew, I'm cooking. When it's on, a car is coming, it will alert you what direction a car is coming from and it will beep at you too as well. So I have a video showing you guys that in action if you guys want to see that and haven't seen it before. Now over here, you got a little thing to make this a little bigger. So if your parking sensors are on, that would be down over here, parking sensors are on, you can use this button so you can see which parking sensor is going off. Now you guys will see there's going to be kitty corners for the front. It's nothing going to be directly right in front of you. It's just going to be the kitty corners, but you'll get the full surrounding for the back, okay? So, sorry for shaking the foam there, guys. All right, so parking sensors, pretty nice and easy. Now, if you don't see that, it's because your parking sensors are off. It will not fully display everything over there for you, and you won't get the, the noise, okay? So, that's going to be a backup camera. Oh, one more thing about the backup camera. You turn your wheel. Guess what? That turns to as well, kind of guides you, changes colors to let you know your tires are not aligned. We'll come down over here. We have a couple different drive modes, the little toggle switch. So as we play around with this, you'll see it right up here on the driver's interface. So we'll come right up. We're gonna keep toggling all the way up. First one's gonna be your sport mode. Sport mode is gonna change how your car is gonna perform, a little more responsive, a little more fun driving. I just wanna go down to the next one, it's your normal. This is your daily driving habits right there. This is great for your city. Now to maximize fuel economy, this is more effective on your highway driving, all right, is put it in econ mode. Econ, it says it down below, you get a nice little green leaf, so when you're being fuel efficient from that point, it's gonna help you guys out. Um, sorry, I got distracted over here. So anyways, with the econ mode, it's gonna make you more fuel efficient, most effective for highway driving. So this is really designed when you're in cruise control, you're driving down the highway, you're gonna be maximizing your fuel economy from that point. And you can see anywhere from two to four more miles to a gallon, depending on how aggressive you guys are driving. Now, when you're being fuel efficient, it will have a nice low fuel efficiency backlight. It's gonna be right up there. And it's gonna be a green bar It's gonna display up there. Then when you're not being fuel efficient, there's gonna be no bar like we see now. All right, so that's gonna be from that point. Now you can keep econ mode on for your city driving. It's just not as effective because you're consistently stopping going. Now keep in mind when it's in the econ mode, it sacrifices your acceleration power and then your AC control too as well, your AC power. So you gotta choose those hot summer days. Feel efficient or do you wanna be comfortable? We'll put that back up into normal. Now idle stop. Some people have mixed feelings about this. I get it guys, but hey, if you don't like your idle stop, this is the button you're gonna smack. Then you get this beautiful emblem down here below to let you know your idle stop is turned off. 
Now, for those that don't know what idle stop is, let me explain it to you. All right, so idle stop. If the car meets its requirement, engines attempt, the cab is to attempt, stuff like that. Okay, so it has sub programs to protect itself from additional wear and tear. When I get to a stop, I firmly apply it onto the brake. It shuts off the engine. All right, so this is not be a more of fuel efficient thing. This is more of uh, emission awareness. All right, so this technology has been around for a very long time. It's just we're kind of late in the game to adopt it here in the U.S. All right, so now once I let go off the brake pedal, boom, the engine starts up before I apply it onto the gas pedal. All right, so if you guys don't like it, that's fine. Just every time you get into your car, hit this button. I've also noticed that if I put it into uh, sport mode, it automatically disables it too as well. Then we have the electrical parking brake. Pop that bad boy right up. You can see the light comes right on. And then we have it right over here too as well. Your electrical parking brake. To turn that off, you simply have to apply onto the brake pedal and then push it right in. You have a whole brake here. When this is enabled, it will give you a little icon right up here to let you know when it's enabled and when it's actively working. So every time you get to a stop, you can take your foot off the brake pedal because it holds the brake pedal until you apply onto the gas. I have a video on that too as well. Now we're gonna have a leather armrest. Pop this bad boy right open. You got a little tray action. We can move this tray around if you want to. Then a deep cargo area here. This is gonna be great to hide all of my snacks, stuff like that from the kiddos, the quarters, things like that. Now we're gonna come over here to the glove box. Deep enough, challenge accepted. You can throw whatever you want in there. It feels like it goes to a new dimension. You guys forget about it. I do that on a daily basis. We're gonna have an auto dimming rear view mirror. Down below, you got a garage door openers. Right over here, you got your little dome light switch. There we go, it's off, it's in the center. So if I open up a door, these lights will come on. I can hit the little buttons here, get these bad boys going, and we have a one-touch power mineral. There we go, now I can wave at everyone. I don't play with this on rainy days. I'm assuming you guys won't either. So it opens, tilts, and all that stuff. A place for your sunglasses. The light action. This whole thing adjusts. There we are. Then of course this one will adjust. We got your oh no handles if you need these bad boys. Oh no. All around. Now a couple things I don't want to forget to mention with you guys. Of course you can have your rear seat reminder. So if someone opens up the back door and we shut off the car, you know from that point, it will tell you to double check your rear seat. Then we'll also have a traffic sign recognition system. This front camera up here is going to find the, the speed limit signs. It'll display it up there because you have that reminder. And then you have a cool setting too as well. If you're speeding, it will warn you. And you can fine tune that too. So I mean, it won't warn you at the speed limit. So let's say we find 35 miles an hour, psh, throws it up there, you're going, I don't know, 37. You can have to choose to warn you at the speed limit three, five, or 10 above from there. So you have a lot of cool goodies that you guys can customize, all right? So this is pretty much, I have almost, once again, I have all the hatchback videos done. I have one out there for the Sport, the EXL, now the Sport Touring. The only one I'm missing is an entry level LX. I haven't seen one yet. If one arrives here at Randy Kill Honda here, I would definitely get one done so you guys know all the standard stuff and the price point and information on the entry level. Now, don't forget to check out my sedan lineup if you guys are having a hard time trying to decide if you want a sedan or a hatchback or even check out the big brother hrv if you want something with all-wheel drive with the same kind of concept as these okay well thank you so much guys hit that like consider subscribing helps out the channel more than you know i'll see you guys at the next video bye bye